cylinder dredges up mud from the seabed in the form of long cores. The types of tiny fossils found at different levels in the core shows the sea temperatures of the past. Geologists have collected enough sea cores to form a detailed history of climate during the last million years. Dr. James Hayes leads the research. The climatic record in these deep sea cores tells us that there have been eight ice ages in the last 700,000 years. It also tells us when they have occurred. There are many enigmatic, astonishingly well-executed ancient ruins found all over the world, with some regions in particular displaying overwhelming masses of evidence supporting the posit of a past highly advanced builder. These areas often littered with displays of incredible ancient feats. Yet our next place of interest possesses some of the most incredible rock-cut chambers to be found anywhere. And just like that of the Giza Plateau or the Inca Trails of Peru, Turkey, along with its ancient counterpart Lebanon, still contains a smorgasbord of ancient uparts, mystifying masonry skills, and gigantic stone trilithons all found within what would appear to have been a major settlement of this now lost civilization. The reason why we attest to many of Earth's ruins, having once been the work of a past now lost civilization, is the number of unexplainable features nearly always discovered at these puzzling ruins. Therefore, to understand that all the knowledge utilized to build such sites, the methods for lifting such stones conveniently forgotten is to suspect that they were, instead, the work of an equally forgotten civilization. It appears to be a logical hypothesis to pursue, one which we indeed have been, which we have found bared much fruit. We believe we have now amassed enough evidence to support our claim beyond any reasonable doubt, subsequently discovering a far more fitting tale of events in regards to the true origins of many of the world's largest of ancient ruins. Hattusa is a melting pot of baffling construction techniques and surviving ancient artifacts. Within permitted timelines, the site predictably has a well-explored period of inhabitation. Yet any explanation as to how these more recent ancestors achieved its construction conveniently eludes modern academia. Hattusa was also known to have been the capital of the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1986. The main focus of this video, however, is in relation to a rather curious anomaly at the site, a unique object, which could be described as an out-of-place rock cut. Known as the Green Rock of Hattusa, this mysterious stone's origin, or perhaps more importantly, its past function, is unknown. The green stone was once so perfectly polished it originally had a mirror finish. Yet why this particular stone is here, why they chose this green stone specifically, or who brought it to the site, is a complete mystery. There are many other impressive features found at the site, including holes bored through massive megaliths with seemingly laser-like precision. It also has the ruins of what has been confirmed to have once been a sphinx. All of these characteristics indicate that, at one time, in the very distant past, Hattusa was a place of significant importance, sharing an uncanny amount of similarities in build technique and layout to many sites of South America, yet its green stone is unique to this site only. The question is why? Why was this green stone quarried, cut, placed where it lay, then polished to perfection? Was the stone merely a gift from an Egyptian pharaoh, as modern academia would have you believe? Or did the green stone of Hattusa once serve a more profound purpose? One day, we will find out. It is an object which we find highly compelling. Modern-day Turkey – a literal treasure trove of surviving relics of a lost antiquity. Temples from a bygone era seemingly prehistoric stone-cut monolithic academically supposed tombs, countless ancient ruins, not only built from incredibly large megalithic stones, but many said stones etched with a signature, which we have found at a number of sites now 
dotting the entire globe, this all aligns with our own researchers' conclusions, suggesting they were, in fact, left by a now lost civilization due to their concentrations focused around nearby anomalies and unexplainable features often found amongst the structures, that these unique blocks are found so often incorporated into sites impossible to explain, yet spanning most of the Earth. Yet regardless, Turkey is an excellent place for anyone to heavily research, in pursuit of fragments of evidence, overwhelmingly, undeniably, supporting our long-held postulation of lost yet once highly capable civilizations who once called these sites home. Although some stonework in the area can be acclaimed as cyclopic, Hattusa also possesses something more extraordinary – a mysterious green cube, still in situ to this day. Its continued existence and seeming resistance to grave robbing and stone robbers, perhaps due to the many stories attached to the stone all of which claim it possesses powerful energies, one of the reasons why it has fortunately remained where it was placed untold millennia ago. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguingly, is the possibility for our claim here on the channel that just like that of many other ruins all over Earth, not claimed by our most recent ancestors themselves, but due to this convenience, subsequently attributed to said group by modern archaeology as their work also, successfully concealing the site's true remarkable origins, especially our mysterious green stone. Rich agricultural lands once surrounded the ancient settlement, which we claim was itself built atop the remains of a now lost civilization, and their possible choice of location may have been driven by the stone itself, thus having predated said group's arrival which, according to modern archaeology and permitted timelines, dates from an inhabitation during the Bronze Age. Yet the purpose for the green stone, its past possible significance, and the seemingly still surviving wariness and reluctance of any immoral activities surrounding the stones continued life at the center, or proverbial center, or indeed foundation of this incredible site, left alone, still resting in its location, its mysterious supposed powers, documented since and many before its long-recorded history within modern academic journals. Could the claims regarding the green stone be true? Even attributed with miraculous healing capabilities? The inhabitants had an excellent supply of timber for building, fertile lands providing possibly millions of now lost ancestors who grew crops of wheat in massive quantities. They had a rich diet too, with barley, lentils, and many other remnants of fruit and vegetables that were successfully being harvested. Flax has also been found to have once been harvested, however, their primary source of cloth was sheep wool. They also hunted deer responsibly within their forests, but akin to Old England, may have been a luxury reserved for the land-owning nobility alone. It seems that the people who initially created the site successfully built a functioning, architecturally, irrigationally, and horticulturally advanced settlement far out of the reach of our bronze-wielding ancestors, who, we feel, simply reignited into a functioning township. Yet it seems the other settlements have all but turned to dust. Were they simply neglected by our Bronze Age ancestors, perhaps? If so, supportive of our posit of the site's efficient layout, was not the work of the Bronze Age people exhibiting a layout and managing of land far beyond their capabilities, and these neighboring sites, possibly too dilapidated to try to repair, were simply left to slowly return to nature. Yet, the green stone, we feel, due to its location, along with the many past popular native accounts of strange goings-on surrounding its claimed energy, the possibility that the stone was once held in incredibly high regard is a possible history for the green stone which we find highly compelling.